breakfast today. Uh, I call this intuitive cooking. It's like intuitive eating, but it's in the process of cooking. You kind of figure out what you're gonna make and you really do it based on like cravings or uh, messages from your body. And this one is a message from my body. So my body has been saying two things very clearly to me. No breads, rices, oats in the morning. No, no grains in the morning. And uh, no gluten-free bread, nothing like that. And so I have been trying to come up with other ways because I love to eat eggs and I can eat, just eat an omelet and that's fine. But today what I did is I took spaghetti squash. It was going bad, so I had to cook it. So I cooked that yesterday. So this is some spaghetti squash with just capers and some raw goat cheese. That's the other thing my body has been saying to me. It's been saying you need to add raw, some raw goat cheese back in your diet. You'll be able to handle it. And normally if I had known this was what I was making, I would have made the squash first and then put the eggs on it like this but I made the eggs first not knowing what in the world I was gonna make to eat and you know this spaghetti squash kind of ended up looking like a hash like if this was potato I added the capers in just for a little something different I'm gonna go get some fermented hot sauce and put that over uh, but I just wanted to show you because my body is being very specific to me right now so I was nervous to try the raw goat cheddar again but I ate it last night and I woke up and I was fine. I could breathe, I didn't have vertigo. So I'm gonna try it again today and then I'm gonna give it a couple days and just see how my body reacts, but so far so good. So that's just a lovely little intuitive cooking morning. I decided I actually don't wanna do nightshades in the morning either. I'm just gonna do some fermented radish. Just throw some of this gorgeous this is fermented radish with a little bit of onion and garlic scape. So I realize I'm like singing the praises of a meal I haven't even tasted. I didn't even taste it. Usually I taste as I cook, but this one just seemed like no big deal. All right, a bite of everything. A bite of squash, a bite of egg, a bite of radish. It's really good. Yeah, that's tasty. It's hard to make spaghetti squash taste good without like a big hearty meat sauce or cheese sauce, but this really worked. It's really light. The capers are delicious. It makes me um, feel like I can do a lot more with spaghetti squash just in small little amounts and servings like this which is really nice. And to substitute it for even like potato, like right now it's kind of filling in for a potato and hash. It's just really good. But I think the key was like really frying it in oil and salt and pepper and then getting that cheese to melt in there. But I, I'm, I'm pleased with this. And the egg, look at the color of these yolks. These birds have been foraging like nobody's business and that is just incredible right now. Thank you, chicken. All right, so breakfast, check. Now I just gotta figure out my day. Yesterday, I tied up a lot of loose ends on projects like getting those herbs dried and um, I finished, I decided what to make with the end of the tomatoes. I did a tomato soup. We had some for dinner with grilled cheese and then I put the rest in the freezer. And then I have, had a little bit left in the pot. So I put water in there and I put a couple of bones that we had from steaks that we had eaten and I put it in there. So it's kind of like this tomatoey broth and I'm thinking of doing some sort of bean soup from that. Again, it's like intuitive cooking. It's just sort of, here's a little bit of soup. What can I do with this? How can I extend it? Here are these bones, I could make a lovely broth. And you just kind of kind of run with it like that. So I have that on the stove now, which is great, because then that could become lunch for Dave and I, a little bean soup. I think I'm gonna run some errands. Yesterday, I cleaned the entire downstairs, vacuumed everything, got everything nice, cleaned. And that just helps me, like when I have projects coming up, like I do right now, 
I'm working on getting a shop sale going. Um, I mentioned I have a shop called Pocket and Fern. Right now you can only see it on Instagram. There's nothing for sale, but uh, it is becoming something more. So I'll talk about that again soon. For my Patreon supporters, I do a voice recording each month to sit down and think about what I wanna say, what I wanna chat about and get that done. And then I gotta get out there and get those herbs and get everything drying because there was a frost last night. It was not a hard frost. However, it did seem like it was there for quite a while. So I need to go outside and investigate. Sorry, I'm not using my tripod. I need to go outside and investigate and see what happened. And I'd love to just kind of get some of those last herbs so I know that that job is done. And I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need to pull the beans because the beans aren't gonna like this at all. I might have even lost some to the frost. So I have to go see what's what with that. And um, just sitting here looking out the window, I'll show you. I, I realize not all of you live where leaves turn colors, but finishing my coffee, staring out the window, I'll show you. Not a bad view at all. So I think because my breakfast was so lovely, I'm gonna go whip up another, I have a tiny little bit of spaghetti squash left. I'm gonna go whip up a batch for Dave to eat after he gets back from the gym. I gambled and I lost. We had two cold nights that were, they never predicted frost, but it happened the night before, so I figured it would probably happen last night. And I have just been holding on and holding on with these Rapicante squash because I really wanted them to harden, at least some of them, like this one. I lost. You can see the frost got to them. Now, all of these I can eat green, just like zucchini. This little baby got the frost too, so I'll probably see if I can cook that up today. This one, however, I kind of wish I had taken off and just seen if I could ripen it inside. Um, the thing is, is, we were going to get, we're about to get nights in the mid 50s, and so I knew that these would be fine in that weather if they could just get through these two nights. And they didn't, so you can see, if you can see here, see that color difference? That's where the frost got it. So that's a bummer. However, it was a gamble and I knew, I played, I played, played the odds and I lost that one. So there's still two more huge ones out there. And um, I really don't know. I'll go check those out and see how they are. I, I'm guessing I have to take everything off. I've never had this happen, so I'm not really sure what to do. I just think they're so beautiful and funky and fun. All right, my plan is to make a big giant soup that I will blend up and be able to freeze a ton of. So this is all the green repicante. It's a large onion, a couple of turnips, and some potatoes, and that tiny little red curry squash that definitely was not ripe. So I'm just gonna, and I'll add a ton of garlic, and I'll try to get some more potatoes dug up today to add into here as well, because it's gonna need a lot more potatoes for as many squash that are in here. I might add another onion. I'll just kind of play it by ear. Looks like that's a little, needs to be trimmed off. This is the turnip. And we'll just see what happens. Maybe I'll add a bunch of herbs, some broth, blend it up, maybe cheese, some raw goat cheddar. We'll see what happens. So I added chicken broth just up to the, pretty much the line of the vegetables. You can't take it out. You can always add it in. So I don't want to make too much because this is going to be a blended soup. So I'm just kind of going with it here and let the, I'm gonna let the chicken broth kind of cook these vegetables down and I imagine some of the water will come out of the vegetables as well, adding a little bit more liquid. Um, so maybe half hour, 40 minutes, depends kind of how much that squash has to cook. It's, it's tough because it's kind of in between the soft zucchini stage and the harder winter squash stage. So I'm thinking about 45 minutes probably. Look at how beautiful this is. This is made out of a conta quilt. I probably should just wear it in my own hair, but I'm gonna sell it 
it's going in my shop. It's ironing day, so I'm gonna get a bunch of stuff ironed so that when I take pictures, everything will be so beautiful. Isn't this gorgeous? Double-sided. I mean, that's the way to go, right? I actually kept this one. I went thrifting for a bunch of scarves, and I kept this one because it has these little holes in it. It was actually supposed to be for the shop, but it has all these little holes in it, so. Sweet Delilah and I are waiting for Chloe's train. And there's a park right by her train, like a little gazebo, little parky area. And a lot of people bring their dogs. And I'm feeling like the worst dog mama right now because I brought her and I forgot her leash. And so we can't get out. And she just has to sit in the car and look at all the dogs and not be with them. So bad mama three quarts of the courgette soup and we were able to eat it so chloe myself and dave had it for lunch it was delicious i didn't end up adding cheese because it turns out i cannot eat the raw goat cheddar um i got really sick i got asthma and had to use an inhaler and that was a bummer so my body needs something but it wasn't that so we'll figure out what it was but this is going in the freezer I am so thrilled to be able to have such a beautiful offering on a day that is very cold outside and we bake some bread and um, maybe eat some dark greens like crisped up on top of it or something. Really yummy. Very happy about that. And this is just blended after what you saw. Uh, I just blended it. And then I can change it up when I make it if I want to add something else to it. I certainly can. Maybe some fried sage leaves, that might be good too. I'm in a squeaky chair, so hopefully that won't disturb the video. I also have two dishwashers going. We have like one of those split dishwashers, so it, you only can do, you can do a half a load at a time, which has been awesome, but they're both running right now, so that's all I can hear, but I don't think you're gonna be able to hear it. But between my, sneaky, my squeaky chair and the dishwashers, I'm like, man, my timing is, <laughs> is not impeccable. And hello, it's been a hot minute. Uh, yeah, it has been. I have been in deep rest this week. We have had just a, a month. We had a, a kid who needed a lot of support and it brought up a lot of feelings for me and it was somewhat exhausting. And there's been some other stuff and I've just realized that I just haven't stopped to rest, to recover, to kind of between the job that I've ended and the job that I'm going to be beginning, I haven't taken any time and I need to take some time. And while I love doing YouTube, it is not an income generator for me at, at this time. Um, and so uh, it was a natural place to kind of just like put the pause on and just catch up with life and lay on the couch and watch Shetland and reruns and just let myself be. And I needed it and I didn't realize how much I needed it. Um, and there was also another thing going on, which I am gonna talk about. Uh, every single time I've posted a video on YouTube, I lose a lot of followers. Now, I have taught online business to women for years. And one of the things that I have always said to them is that when someone unsubscribes from your newsletter or unfollows you or whatever, it's just a sign that you're getting closer to really knowing what it is that you do and who you're talking to. You're getting clearer because you don't want people in that community who don't need you, who don't want what you're saying. Like, that doesn't make any sense. That's not why we do what we do. When we put ourselves out there online, it is because we're talking to a specific person. And so I was like, you know, I'd get like, I'd be up to like, you know, my goal is a thousand by the end of the year. I'd be like at 732. And then I'd post a video and I'd drop down to 723. And then I'd 
you know, get back up to 728 and then I'd post a video and I'd drop down to 720 or 719. And so there were huge fluctuations happening. And of course, I don't know who's coming and going. I don't get that information. That's not data that I'm able to collect. And so I just have to keep, you know, in my heart, the truth that when that happens, I am getting closer to knowing, to finding the community that I want to have here, that that's the reason that I'm here. I don't know if I've said this on here, but I started doing the YouTube because I was moving away from Instagram and I loved doing Instagram stories. I loved just being able to pop in little parts of my day here and there, like look what I'm doing now, or here's something interesting, and just share little bits and bobs. But with Instagram, a couple of things. One, you don't own it, it's not yours, it disappears within 24 hours. And the attention span of people, because they know there's this lineup, like you see, if you look at it, you'll see people maybe watch one, two, three, and then that it just drops off, drops off because people are doing this, boop, boop, boop. And so your ability to tell a full, like meaty story is limited. And I know that a lot of people find great success there and they enjoy making reels and you know they're they're kind of grooving with where the the direction Instagram's going and I wasn't. And so for me being able to continue to make the videos by using YouTube as an outlet felt really good. And in my coaching career, I was pretty much making a video a week for 14 years for my programs. And it was one of the pieces that people would tell me that they would enjoy. And basically the videos were this, I just sat there and talked. And these videos on YouTube are able to be a little bit more interactive. I can take you along and we can cook together, we can can, we can go to the garden, we can go shopping, we can sit in my studio, which I'm in now, which I need to make a nice little background um, for my videos, gotta do something here. I've got like, I've got some things on the wall, and but my desk is just not set up and I need something really pretty and then the the table is right back there you can see some of the winter squash hanging out too so anyway I need to do that but that's what the videos were so just me hanging out and uh and it sort of felt like this was just a really great opportunity to not worry about subscribers to not worry about income to not worry about any of that but it will get to you it, it does get to you it's it's impossible to not see it and there is this thing that we have inside of all of us this need to belong that when you see people leaving in droves after you've put something out there online often that is feels very vulnerable to you it, it stinks and it, it can it can just give you a moment of pause. And for some people, it's too much. And I would say that I am, I was having a moment with it. I was having a moment and I'm feeling better and I'm moving through. And uh, that is largely because of the community who is here, who is saying and and staying and supporting um, and, and giving me reassurance that what I'm bringing here does have some value because there's no point doing this really if there's no value. If I am not in some way supporting, lifting, offering, then my time is better spent elsewhere because that's what I'm here to do. That's my work in the world. And so uh, it will take all sorts of different forms and look different and change over time but I want to make sure that that's what I'm doing. You know, I'm not here to have some like super popular homesteading vlog because I'm still getting clear on what it is I'm talking about. And for me, it's really about sacred roots. It's about the sacred roots that we are, that we are planting in our lives through this beautiful simplicity connection with earth, with source, with each other.
with food, you know, with beauty. And, and I like to tell stories. I like to tell stories because I learn through story. I learn the best through story. So that's all I'm gonna say right now. And I just wanted to touch back in and say hello and kind of reconnect and just let you know where I've been. And thank you for being here. I appreciate you.